my really my, my pleasure give the talk here. So yeah, also my honor <coughs> to be on half of this authors <coughs> to give the talk. Uh, so the income inequality in China is part of the wider, the bigger project on the inequality in developing giants. So we just follow the general, you say, uh, the guideline of the wider project by focus on four important issues. Yeah. The first issue is that <coughs> the long term, the change in the income equality in the past four decades. The second <coughs> issue is about long term the trend of wage inequality in urban China also in past four decades. The third one is that the topic, the top incomes and its impact on the income equality over time. So, so last topic is about redistributive policy <coughs> and its impact on income equality in general, also on the you say, <coughs> income gap between urban and the rural area, something like that. So follow these uh, four topics, that is, that we have finished uh, yeah, my team, and my colleagues and I have finished the four paper, five papers. The four papers focus on the different topics. Then we have a summary paper, which is summarize the key findings and try to give some explanations on the dynamic change in the income equality the over time. So first the paper is about is a long-term evaluation of the income equality uh, and the poverty in China. Uh, it's written by <coughs> three authors. My colleague, uh, Chu Liang Luo, is professor in the BNU. Also, Terry Sickler, uh, she's here, and myself. This, you see, paper mainly focus on income equality. And the second paper is about, you see, the wage growth and wage inequality in urban China, you see, between 1988 and 2013. It covered almost yeah, 25 years. So the two authors, uh, <coughs> Bjorn Gustafsson is here, also Haiyuan also here. So the third paper, you see, is on the Redistributive role of the, the government transfer on the income equality in China, uh, written by uh, Dr. Meng Cai and Professor <coughs> Xi Ming from Renmin University, China. So this yeah, paper just focused on trying to look at the impact of this public transfer on the income equality whether you reduce income equality and uh, increase income equality. Also, yeah, uh, investigate the detailed items of each public transfers on the income equality. So the fourth paper is on the top incomes in China, you see data collection and the impact on the income equalities, written by my colleague, uh, Qing Hai Li from Nanjing University, of finance and economics. Also, yeah, by my colleague uh, Hai Yuan Wang from P Peking University and myself. So Terry uh, Sikula and I, then we uh, wrote the draft of the summary paper. Indeed. So then you see my following uh, presentation is divided into parts. The first part uh, just summarized the key findings from these four papers. Yeah. The second part, give some explanations. Why income inequality increase? Why in income inequality become stable recently? Something like that. Yeah. So first the finding is that 
income equality was re, yeah, <coughs> rising before 2007, and then falling slightly by using official debt or household the debt. You see, if you look at Gini coefficient by using the data from the survey, it's a CHIPS survey. The CHIPS survey <coughs> has been conducted by my research team. We have the survey in 1988, in 1995, and 2002, and 2007, and 2013. So the Gini coefficient of the income equality is increased from 1988 to 2007, and then decreased by almost six percentage point yeah, to the 2013, something like that. So if you look at official data, <coughs> we'll show the same pattern. Income inequality yeah, increased till the 2008, something like that, that decreased slightly. Uh, that finding is based on the household debt, yeah, usually. The second finding is that rising income equality was due to the high income percentiles have fast income growth than low percentile. And the falling <coughs> income equality was due to faster income growth of the lower income percentiles. That means in the past three decades, low income group and high incomes, they all have the income growth. But uh, you see, in the different period, low income groups have lower income growth than high income group. And in the last 10 years, the low income group have high income groups, then you see high income group. So also the third finding is that one of major driving forces for rising income equality before 2007 is changed in the household income structure. That means the share of farming income <coughs> is having equalizing effect but have declined constantly. And the wage income, the more unequally distributed in rural area, have increased over time. And the property income was nothing in the 80s, in the 90s, but have increasingly and unequally growing since two thousand, So transfer income and also wage income have become more equally <coughs> distributed and contributing to the decline in income equality recently. So the fourth, the finding is that urban and rural income gap was is rising till the 2007, and then falling significantly, resulting in decline income equality nationally. If you look at, you see, uh, income gap, income, urban, rural income ratios, uh, it increased, you see, over time till the 2007. It, uh, become, you say, the uh, largest the gap, that decline in the 2013, indeed. Also, if you do some, you say, decomposition of the total overall income equality, you see, into within urban and rural area, and the between rural and urban area, you will find the share of the with seeing income equality, you see, decline to the 2007 and the increase. That means between urban and rural inequality increased to 2007 
and decrease. Yeah. So that means urban and rural income gap become very big driving forces for the change in the overall income inequality. Uh, fifth finding is that the wage income in wage income equality in urban area was rising before 2007, almost the same pattern as change in the income equality. And then becomes stable. Yeah. If you look at Gini coefficient of a wage inequality or the tariff index, you will find you see uh, inequality increase till the 2007, that become quite stable. Okay. Uh, so the fifth, the uh, sixth finding is that mm -hmm. the changes in wage setting mechanism, such as gender wage gap, was smaller in the 80s and then widening till the 2007. But in the 2013, uh, no less than 36% of female works were classified as lower wage earners to be compared to the 22% of male works. The role of uh, seniority become declined before 2007. Then have increased significantly, you see, recently. So returns to education was very low in 1980s and increased in the 90s and early 2000s and have slightly decreased after 2007. Okay. So works in the SOE and the foreign investment enterprise have received wage premium compared to other works yeah, in urban area. So the seventh key findings is that public transfer have a positive role on the reducing income equality in China just, uh, you say, before the income, before the transfer, that is. So that means, uh, yeah, if you have the transfer income, you will have the Gini like this. If you say, take the transfer income out, you will get a little bit high income inequality. Okay? So income inequality increased, decreased, by the transfer income, indeed. Also, if you look, look at the share of the in transfer income for the different desire, you will see not a very big difference, you see, in shares for the different desires. Okay. So that means uh, if you look at the impact of a transfer income on the income inequality after transfer income, after you see transfer income, you will see, you see uh, transfer income have some disequalized effect on the income equality. That means after transfer income, if you increase the transfer again, you will have high income equality. You see, that is very, very interesting result. So uh, the last uh, finding is that fast growth number of Chinese million year in the last decade. You see the data on the top incomes indicated that top income have extremely high income and wealth, and they are excluding from or underrepresented in the household service lead to considerable underestimate income equality in the China. That means if you include the top data of the top income, you see, and combine with the household data, you will get quite high, the Gini of the income equality. Yeah. Uh, so try to give some explanations. Uh, yeah. So the first thing is that can the long-term trend of the income equality in China can be explained by the Kuznets hypothesis? Probably you know that. No. You see, <coughs> Andrew, yeah, I do not, does not agree with that. So the 
that means, yeah, if you just look at, you see, actual change, you know, actual genius of the income inequality over time, also you can get the line predicted by Kuznets hypothesis, you will find. So the actual genius, the change, not consistent with what the predicted by Kuznets hypothesis. So that means, uh, you see, there will be lower income equality at the beginning of the economic reform. Also, even you see, when the income comes to the top level, you see, they will tend to be declined. But actually, income equality continues rising over time. That means the uh, hypothesis cannot predict yeah, what happened in the income equality in China, something like that. So uh, our explanation is that we try to you say, look at income inequality from a perspective of economic development and the economic transitions also change in the public policies. Okay. So, uh, so when explanation is that the rising income equality in the first three decades of economic reform was partly due to change in economic structure. That means economic development, fast economic growth, and also re reallocation of labor from agriculture to industrial to the service sectors, also urbanization and migration, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so that is also <coughs> Rising income equality was due to transitions, you see, from a planning economy to the market economy, and the economic decentralization and the development of the private sector, and the privatization as SO, SO, SOE, and the integration into the world economy. You see, figure just give you uh, impression that you see the export and import. The growth, you see, after 2000, that means China entered into WTO, have a very fast growth indeed. So, fast uh, growth in export and the import that were observed, services labor from rural areas. Okay. So, another explanation is that, you see, rise in income equality have also resulting from incomplete economic and political reforms. Incomplete, yeah. You know that China is still on the transition. So that means that is incomplete transitions leading to corruption, red seeking, and the monopoly of SOE, and the rapid rise of top income. You see, this figure indicated the number of million years the growth in the last uh, 15 years. You will find, you see, after 2013, the big the jump in the number of million years. Even, you see, the threshold for million year increased. The still big number increased. Okay. Uh, so, also, we should realize some <coughs> equalizing fact, which try to reduce income inequalities, like a reduction and the vanishing of the surplus labor in rural sectors, can explain the rising wage of the rural urban migrants, <coughs> resulting falling income gap between urban and rural households. You see, that is the number <coughs> of the rural migrants' work in the urban areas. That's more than nearly 200 million of migrants' work work in the uh, urban area. That means that is wide increase of migrants' work is after 2003. Okay, so that means. 
Mark and Roy make more money, they will send back to their hometowns. That means that it reduces the income gap between urban and rural areas. Uh, another explanation for another equalized fact is that uh, the redistributive of the policy have had a relatively weak impact on the reducing income inequality. But it has become stronger in the last decade, which can explain partly why income inequality have a stable tendency recently. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you.